we have the absolute number one top tip ever for servicing jab school toilets. If you have to do your toilet, don't miss this episode. Right, so we're right here, and the reason we're right here on a horrible grey day like this is we're looking at lines. I know we're always harping on about lines, but we have been listening to an expert, a sailing legend, Tom Cunliffe, who has sailed everywhere there is to sail for as long as people have been sailing, apparently. He is the old man of the sea. And I'll put a link to the videos in question up here. But he was talking about mirroring lines, which, as you know, is a subject dear to my heart. I'm always harping on about him. And he says, really, you can get by with very, very few of them. So we've given it a go. So the storm has passed and we have taken our mooring lines back to just the nylons. And Tom says, put a loop on the pontoon and clean it on your boat and pull them tight so there's not much movement. That way there's no shock loading on the ropes. But the big one is at the back of the boat. Because what he has said about the back of the boat is just run a spring to stop yourself hitting the pontoon and then loop the spring at the back up and under and through the loop so that you can actually remove either rope without having to undo anything. So we've given it a go and this is what it looks like. Okay so what we've got is this is our forward spring line which stops the boat ramming the pontoon. Basically the boat moves forward, this pulls tight and brings her to a halt. And what we've done is we've passed it up and through this loop so that we can take it off if we need to make an adjustment but the boat is still mirrored okay so the other line I should also be able to take off so and the spring is still on so the advantage of doing it this method is I can take the spring off if I need to or I can take the rear line off if I need to and yet they're both using the same cleat so thank you Mr Cunliffe for that tip it's a very very useful tip from my point of view, I just think that the uh, setup is a lot simpler. Um, so that whereas before we had safety lines, uh, mooring lines, etc., and it was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> will I ever get to the, the bottom of all this? Using the Tom Clumlift method, it's a lot simpler, and I like simple. Let me just be clear. Yeah. If a storm comes along, the lines are getting doubled. I understand that, but it's just that, you know how we, uh, you do the lines and I sort of like sort out everything up on deck. Um, now I feel like, yeah, I can, I can deal this. I can do this. So, because it's simpler. I like simple. Well, we've got the uh, cameras uh, set up. Uh, now we're going to go out and test them in the lock. It's a bit of a grey day, but at least there's some wind. So we're going to see if they actually do what we want, which is to bring you more sailing. We hope. Now. Right, this is going to be a little different from our normal stuff. Um, as you know, we're testing these cameras out and things like that. So what we're going to do is we've got a little section of video where things didn't quite go to plan. Which now, is normal for us, I have to tell you. But now, it gives you more of a, a, a feel of what we actually do. Um, so they're all in there. All our warts. <laughs> Words and all. Uh, normally a lot of this would have been edited out and things like that um, but because the cameras are getting the stuff recorded without us having to hold the camera or do things it's possible to film the whole thing. Um, like I say we wouldn't normally do it this way but what you're going to get now is a bit of a fly on the wall feeling of what it's really like to be out there doing the stuff and how we deal with it really. Um, things we haven't got everything completely sorted yet because um, 
uh, where we put the camera mount in the um, spray hood um, it's clearly picking up vibration from the engine and that's why there's a little wobble mm -hmm. um, so we might have to do something about that we've got to get the position right because sometimes my head's in sometimes it's not so you've got lots of uh, I, I, I'm going around pretty headless for a lot of it yeah so that's why it's a lot more fly on the wall uh, kind of stuff so I hope you enjoy it <laughs> oh. right so we've got two cameras filming yeah and we're now um, uh, going to wind not quite, the wind's over that no, way. No, I know, but what I mean is we're going to go to wind, which is over there. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm going to go and get the uh, line in. Uh, we'll just be careful because there's a wee tag by the end. I think next time when we replace that line, we'll put it on a loop. You know, just so we can pull it through from the cockpit. Right, boom's free. It's definitely <laughs> a bit bouncy. <laughs> Just a touch. All right, boom spray. Right. According to this, we're more or less into wind, according to the Windex. Just tighten that main sheet before you start. I'll be much happier if you do that. Um, in this uh, little bit we've got uh, communication between us um, you'll find that we repeat a lot because uh, say Beverly says something to me then I might repeat it back or do it a slightly different way and that's just because it makes sure that Beverly knows that she, I have heard what she has said um, but also uh, because she was on the wheel that day she's in a much better position to see things mm. that when I'm actually there at the winch I just can't see like for instance she talked about um, I had a line one of my lines was um, trapped and she could see exactly where it was whereas I was just like grubbing around really yeah um, basically so from, from my position at the wheel I can see everything forward, whereas her position at the winches, she's got the boom over her head and the spray hood over her head sometimes as well. So it's very difficult for her to see what's going on inside the sail bag, whereas from the back of the boat, I have a view into the sail bag, so for me it's easy. Mm. So I'm not really doing my best Captain Bly impression and cracking the whip, it's just that from where I stand, I can coordinate all the things that have to be done because I can see everything. And if the positions were reversed, and I was doing the trimming, and Gaynor was doing the helming, she would be doing the shouting out of orders and what can be seen and things like that. And Beverly would be repeating it because oh. it's just the way that we talk, uh, we repeat things so that we both know what we're doing. Yeah. So in this next segment, um, we hoist them in and it doesn't quite go to plan. So what you're getting in this section is... Um, not really a disaster, because that's too big a word for it, but certainly when something unexpected creeps up and we have to deal with that, what do we do? Well, we do this. Hmm. You'll find this a lot easier. I know, because you've trapped it and uh, it's having a little thing. Right, okay. Uh -huh. <sighs> Are we ready? Okay, I think I need to come slightly to starboard. Just put a few more revs on. Yeah, you're more or less there. Okay. Here. Have you come to the corner? You're going to have to go onto the winch. Yeah, the, rope, the lines are caught on something in the reef lines. I know, but that's where I'm going to go onto the winch. Yeah. Because it has to be held with something. Yeah, it does. Oh Christ, Annie's not on. Right. Deal with that now. Thank you. 
I've just turned all the instruments off. I know I did. I'll turn them back on again. Ah. Right, okay, clinching. Uh, well. No, you, you have a reef line caught on the sail or something on the left hand side. Let me get her back into wind. It's inside the bag, the problem. Right, Annie's on the job. It'll be down the uh, port side. There you go, it's this, probably. Try that. Winch. On the winch because uh, you, you lost your momentum. I've lost momentum. Okay. Hold on. Stop. That's one reef. Put the blue leaf reef line tight. A bit more. I think you're there. That's not looking too bad. It's not, is it? Okay. Smets on. We're going to start putting it onto the thing now. Put the wind in here. Please. Okay. Okay, so we've got the uh, main sail up and, um, you know, we then get out the foresail and again we're repeating. Right, we're taking out the other tack now. Okay, you, you put the main out. need my uh, Jenny out. Jenny out. Go for the other right and turn on that winch. That's it. That's good. You don't want her all, that's one. Yeah, just, she's just gone past the reef, so I've just clamped her. Okay. There you go. Okay, one very important lesson we learned from this whole exercise was clear the memory chips before you start. Um, this segment gets cut a bit short because one of the cameras ran out of memory. It's that simple. And it was the one recording all the audio. So, <laughs> so um, we attempted to do a heave two in this and you can just about see it. We've got some audio of the um, tough camera, but the audio on it is very, very poor compared to the other audio. And where it was out on the solar arch, it's completely exposed to wind. So there's a lot of wind noise. So um, this segment is going to be just chopped a little on the short side that's just the way it is but we've learned a lot from this so um, we're going to move forward from there and we hope to bring you 
um, a video about heaving to and things like that and show you how it's done. Obviously we have to alter the camera angles and we will need a spare roving camera so that we can hold it around and, and, and aim it and shoot it. But that's just something we have to deal with but at least now we're better prepared. Yeah, not perfect but that's normal for us. We don't do perfect. <laughs> I've got the red camera at this... Um... Oh, a porpoise! Right under us! Ah. By the shroud! It just went under us. It'll be on this side now. We've got something in the water. Oh shit, we're trailing line. Right, okay. Okay. It was going that way and it went right under us and it was going that direction. Okay, well... I'll I mean, the fin was 20 feet away. I've missed it, okay? <laughs> wow. <sighs> That's one for the mist pile a mile apart. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're going to practice the heave to. We're going to practice yeah? the heave to, so I'm going to turn her to port and you're going to bring them in and as I go round and we leave the Jenny untouched. Right, okay, thank you. Alright, so get a hold of the main sheet and let me know when you're ready. I've got the main sheet. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, heaving to. Could you put that red yellow camera on? Yes. Right, bring that main in. Let her come through the turn. Okay, she's through the turn, putting the rudder against the turn now. Ease the main out a little bit. There. That doesn't seem too bad. I'm just balancing the rudder to keep her in the, the heave too. It is on. That's definitely recording. Right, okay, so I'm going to, uh, we want to put a win um, a re another reef in. Yeah, I think we do. Oh, right, okay then. It's red reef time. Red reef, so oh. pull the red one back. Get some tension in it. Some weeks ago I was in here doing things and changed the joker valve and we said um, I was chipping calcium out like there's no tomorrow and we said that we needed to order a new base gasket and when we did we would just pop it in. Sadly the day has come and so toilet work is now on the job. Now I know that for a lot of boaters toilet work is the one job they absolutely loathe. It doesn't have to be as foul as it's often made out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this in, get this valve in, and I'm hoping that my theories work out and the job is not as dirty, smelly, nasty or whatever. Um, theory number one is that I can pump the liquid out of the pipe. Uh, what we've noticed is the leaking valve, if we do about 20 or 30 pumps very, very rapidly, none of the liquid comes back and we think what's happening is we're pushing air through the system and it's basically pushing all the liquid out of the pipe and into the tank. So we're going to try that. I will rinse the system out with fresh water first and then I shall do my air pump and then I shall take the gasket off while wearing wellies because I'm not stupid and then we will see whether or not I've pumped most of the liquid out and we'll get it all but and if I turn a messy job into a slightly dirty job rather than a absolutely file job. So let's give it a go. Job number one is clean the toilet out with fresh water. Now I know that looks like an awful lot of water that I've pumped in and it's fresh water but we're in a marina we've got taps we can just fill the tank up again it is no problem. So I'm going to clean the system out using all that fresh water and that's a lot of fresh water. Oh <laughs> I turned the light back on. And then I'm going to get stuck in fairly quickly and change that valve. So Hopefully that will take most of the gunge away. The air pump will take any remaining that away. Then I can just get the changeover done. Lickety split. Come. Hopefully you can hear this noise. That noise is bubbles or things in there. Now if I pump air into this 
That's not your stomach, is it? No, I think it's the toilet. Yeah. That noise you can hear is what we think is leakage coming back in, which is why I need to change the gasket. But if I pump a lot of air into this, or what we think is air, that noise goes away, which is why we think we can pump the pipe clean. And we're going to try that. So I'm going to give it 20 or 30 air pumps. There's nothing in here to flush now. I'm just going to pump air. Wind them backwards to give the click like that and then you're good to go because they'll be sitting in their old threads. And you can see that there is no mess at all in this job. Look at that. Well that appears to be a success. Uh, there's no muck and dirt and poo all over the floor. There's no liquids flying out. The gasket is in. Took me all a what? A minute? The only thing I did was I should have started with a longer screwdriver. And as you can see, I fixed that one easily enough. Um, so what I've got to do now is just clean up the mess, which basically just involves picking this old gasket off the floor, because this is all the mess there is. One small point I will make is we put vinegar through it on a regular basis. And we also, while we're in the marina, we flush with fresh water from the tap because we can always fill it up. We're in the marina. It costs us nothing to fill the tank. And as you can see, this does not have a particularly big calcium deposit on it. And what is there comes off quite easily. So um, the simple rules for a happy toilet. Don't put paper down the loo. Occasionally flush with vinegar. And we've now decided air pump it through to the tank so that the liquid does not sit in the pipe. And that will probably keep the pipe clear as well. So it looks like a Jabsco locking head, you can air pump it through to the tank because there was no liquid coming out and you saw how much I put in. So hopefully that's a top tip.